So um, I need advice about the way to go about my uh, my cultural way of uh, dealing with things. So we we Muslims, right? But majority of the way we conduct our business is not in accordance with Islamic values. And what do I mean? You know, uh, the cousins. The cousins are considered like brothers. So we mix really, they're like just like our own blood brothers. So when we, you try to, when you know more about Islam and you, you try to kind of like set boundaries with so many things, it's just, it's so hard with our culture. And by the time, you know, you find yourself trying to fight those things, you feel so isolated and you feel like you, you it's just so weird. What advice would you give someone like me? And it's not just me, it's so many other people that I know are going through the same thing. Well, the issue is, what is the use if all your relatives surrounded you, loved you, cared for you, and respected you, while Allah Azza wa Jal is angry with you? You've lost everything. Whoever finds Allah, he has everything. And then whoever loses Allah, he has lost everything. If everyone boycotts me, <clears throat> does not speak to me, isolates me, but I'm doing this for the sake of Allah and Allah is with me, I'm the happiest man on earth. The Pro Allah Azza wa described Ibrahim to be an ummah of his own. The Prophet ﷺ, when he came with Islam and he called the people to Islam, they boycotted him and his companions for three years in Shib Abi Talib, in a, in, in a remote area of Mecca. Three years, not allowing food or drink to come to them, not allowing people to marry from them, not allowing anyone to communicate with them. Did this make any difference? Not at all. <clears throat> so you have to understand that as long as you are with Allah Azza wa Jal, and what you're doing is for the sake of Allah. And you try to explain to the people that, what do you want me to do? This is the religion of Allah. Allah the Almighty told me that your female cousins are non-mahram. So you have to treat them as such. My female cousin is like any woman walking on the street. Any random woman. She's a stranger, total stranger. What rights do I have to go to this woman on the streets and say, good evening, how are you, how are the kids, how is the husband, let's have lunch someday. She's a total stranger and my cousin is even worse because of the relationship between us. So remain steadfast. Always remember that this is the same route that the Prophet ﷺ and the companions had walked through. And if you are following their footsteps, you will be, inshallah, with them on the Day of Judgment. All what you can do is give da'wah, explain the religion, show the people that this is not my way, this is the way of Allah Azza wa Jalla, this is Sharia. Bring me proof from the Quran that this is permissible, and I'll do it. People always complain, your beard is too long, it's too thick. Give me reason to shave it, give me an evidence, I'll shave it today. Live on air, wallahi. Do you think I love having a beard? This is what Allah mandated, I love it. But if I have a way out of it that Islamic and pleases Allah, so I'll do it on the spot. So whatever we do, we do it for the sake of Allah. And whatever the people are doing, they're doing it for the sake of Satan, knowingly or unknowingly. So don't care about what people do to you, as they say, what doesn't uh, kill you, makes you stronger. So be steadfast on Islam as, uh, uh, for the sake of Allah and you'll end up with good results with the grace of Allah.